This book, The Conscientious Objector's Wife, was edited by my friend Kate MacDonald from a selection of letters exchanged between Frank and Lucy, Frank and Sunderland and his wife Lucy from 1916 to 1919. Their eldest child, pictured on the front here, was Dora, later Palmer, who was my mother, and helped preserve the letters. I remember my grandparents well and enjoyed visiting them when I was young. My sisters and I admired them for the stance they took during the First World War and for their strong belief in helping to make the world a more peaceful and loving place. I'm going to read you a few of their letter letters written in 1916. Bedford Barracks, November the 7th, 1916. Dear wifey, I am at last in the guardroom and my crime is refusing to don the King's uniform. I shall be court-martialed as soon as they can arrange it. I'm not alone in here, as there is a chap who is also from the same for, in for the same thing. He is the chap whom I met at the Skittles one night. Everybody here is very nice to me, and I've nothing to complain of, although the accommodation is a relic of barbarous ages. I consented to go before the doctor and have passed for C3, the lowest scale of all, so I must be an old crock. The Colonel offered me a job at the barracks here as clerk, and it was a great temptation to me to take it and save all the trouble, but I couldn't do it, and so here I am. Another chap went to Wormwood Scrubs yesterday for refusing to serve. I can have anything sent to me while I'm here, and I should be here for quite a week yet. I saw Hancock's yesterday, and he knows my decision, and I expect has told you by this time. Just please yourself what you do regarding the work, and do write to me as often as you can. Could you send for the collars, as I would like to keep respectable as long as possible? I think the worst is over now, and it's just a question of endurance. Send me a writing pad, so that I can scribe to you and to others. I have written to Mother, but not told her the whole truth about myself. We had fun in the guardroom last night, so loneliness won't come yet. I'm always thinking of you, darling, and I trust you will keep your courage up, for I feel you have got to bear the brunt. Lots of love and kisses to you and the children. Frank. And the next one is, de is addressed 91 Shrubland Avenue, Berkhamsted, which is the home of his brother. Dear Frank, in reply to yours of today, I was pleased to hear you're in good health, but more than sorry to hear you have been arrested. You do not say what for or anything about it, but I suppose it's for being so an absentee. The last time we heard you had to go to the county tribunal. Have you been and how did you get on? We shall be waiting to hear how you got on and that will mean, as I, as I suppose you are kicking against being a soldier, but suppose you will go to work if they sent the same to you as your men are doing? You do not say anything about how Lucy and the children are going to live and keep going while you are away. If you can, you might let us know as soon as possible. We were glad to hear the Nippers and Lucy are keeping well during the rotten weather. Now, best love from Mother and wishes to your, for your good health and release soon in which Mother and Lil join me. Your affectionate brother... Alf. P.S. I enclose you a couple of stamps. May be useful. The next letter is addressed 32 North Avenue, which is his home, in Letchworth, November the 8th, 1916. My dear Frank, so glad to have your letter. Just a few lines now, more later, want to catch this post, 9.30. Got on all right with work, Lloyd's and everyone. Made out sheet and sent you to sent it to Hancock's. She'll quite cut you out. I am sending stamps for you to write as many letters as you like. We'll write again presently. Lots of love from us all, Lucy. Guard from Bedford Barracks, November the 8th, 1916. Dear wifey, your letter to hand, which I must say cheered me up very much, and I felt the hug from Chrissy. Perhaps Dora could practice writing by sending me a line. Kiss them all round and accept some yourself. 
I had Hancock's call on me this morning and he brought me the things I asked him to get. Soap, towel, pen and ink, etc. He thinks I'm wrong in my attitude, but I am convinced it is right and could not accept the Colonel's offer as it would have been too easy a way out. However, the die is cast now. Yesterday morning I was ordered to don the uniform and refused to do so. I am now in the guardroom waiting my court-martial, which will be a matter of a few days. They're feeding us all right, but I get no exercise. I wrote to Mother and told her something, but not all, so you will have to tell her if she wants to know. Did you fix up with Mr Lloyd all right and get the money? How did you manage about the bank? I'll write to Noel Palmer and Osborne, but my supply of stamps is going to be taxed heavily. As to coming to see me, I can see anybody they say I, I sent for them. And I've asked Mr Coven to call. He's the Quaker. Do you think you can stand, stand it, seeing me here? I feel very weak on that point myself, being, as you know, so emotional. And I feel your influence here all the time. However, I leave it with you. I can arrange to see you before going to prison and will let the friends know when the court-martial is to be, so that they can be there. If I'm here another week, I shall want some clean things, for the place is filthy, but I will let you know. Mrs Bedford called to see me and sent me in some books, and a, and a loaf of homemade bread and butter to eat with it, so I'm just finding fresh friends. Got rather a stiff neck through the suddenly leaving the amenities of civilization but that'll pass away. I don't expect your letters to be very full, but write as you can. I'll write every day and keep you posted with the news. This morning, a draft went away with the band playing Pack Up Your Troubles in your old kit bag and Smile, Boys, Smile. I pitied the poor beggars, many of whom did not want to come into the army. My pal and I are the only free men in the barracks. By the way, the captain who is to give evidence against me is Captain St Quintin from Clifton. Strange, eh? He did not know me, of course. I wonder what your mother will say now, if, that, if she gets to know. Have you heard from them already? Now I think I have written you a budget, so we'll wind up by telling you that the guardroom now possesses a shove halfpenny board, and I'm getting an expert. Lots of love, darling and I'll soon be back to you and the darlings. I hope the motor, that's the toy car you made, still continues to give satisfaction and that the hens are still laying well. 32 North Avenue, Letchworth, November the 9th, 1916. My dear Frank, I hope you're able to write all you want now, now you have the writing paper. I hope you can have the few goodies I've sent Try and take the eggs in milk, or even in tea, if such a thing is allowed. My morning tea nearly chokes me because you're not sharing it, though sometimes you have refused it. I hope you will write to me every day, as long as you can. I feel your spirit always with me. It helps me during the loneliness of the night. I haven't time to feel lonely during the day. I made up the Britannia sheet all right, I hope, but forgot to enclose Hancock's the 18 shillings and sevenpence, and the 14 shillings and a penny. I remembered it after and hurriedly sent him a pound note. How I will swear at not getting the right amount. Of course I've got it all right, couldn't think how I was so well off, but I could not remember at all how you made the little slips out and felt bad while doing it. The memory of you doing it every Wednesday for so long was too much for me. And then I had several callers. Miss Jeffreys had been five times to see me and Miss Reynolds three. I shall do better next week, tell Hancock's if he grumbles about me. I'm glad you can see him, but I wish he could see our point of view. Our people are all very good, are holding you to the, that you are holding. To. Our people are all very glad you are holding to your principles, but it must be very hard. I cannot find Johnson's book. don't really know what to look for, do you? Yes, I got Lloyd's 15 shillings and 2 shillings from Veloce. Most people pay up all right, and when you come home, I shall be quite an expert at the game. We shall be quite all right, so don't you worry about us. Look after your health as much as you can. You're no old crock. 
the doctor would pass you for what he liked. I had a letter from your mother this morning, written by Alf, of course, wants to know what you've done and how we are provided for. I have not answered. She need not worry. We shall not want. I am well and doing your work, and you were quite determined not to serve. Right must be right. Of course, they won't see it so. I suppose my mother will get to hear soon. Not from me, though. They've not answered my last letter yet. I think with you, we could not bear to meet again to part once more. We must keep up and be brave. No weakness must enter into this. We have tried to face it in imagination, but it is cruel when we have so when we are so much to each other and have been for so many years. If we might only continue to write even, it would be bearable. But as I have said before, our spirits are together till we meet in the flesh or in death. Till then, we go on with our work as it comes to us. Yours for humanity, I for our children, teaching them the gospel of love, freedom and liberty, hoping they may grow up to resist the happiness, realise the happiness that we are dreaming and striving for. Good night, my husband and sweetheart. My best and only love to you forever. Lucy. 32 North Avenue, Letchworth, November the 9th, 1916. Dear Daddy, we miss you very much and hope you will soon come back. Mother has been out all the week, but me, we managed all right. We went to play on Saturday at Mrs Palmer with Nancy and Esther, and we went to tea at Mrs Palmer as well. And on Tuesday we went to dinner, and we went to Mrs Lack to tea, till Mother came back from home from Baldock on Monday. We're going to Miss Benelio tomorrow for tea, with love from Dora Sunderland. Gardrum, Bedford Barracks, Bedford, November the 10th, 1916. Darling wife, of course you want a letter, so I'll do my best to spare time to write one. We're very busy here, you know. Had a shave this morning at the country's expense and feel quite clean. Our court-martial has not come off today, so perhaps it will do so tomorrow. Hope so, at any rate. Our room is rather cold so we pace up and down like caged lions to get warm. We get plenty of air and precious little else. I'm no longer a vegetarian as our diet is decided for us and they gave us salmon for breakfast yesterday and batter pudding and mutton for dinner today. For tea we had bread and cheese and jam. A good mixture, eh? But there's not enough of it. Half a loaf between four men and one slice of breakfast this morning. No butter but some bacon which I did not touch. I made up with jam from the day before. I'm feeling well and the confinement will not tell on me much as our house is so airy. Heard from the boys of the barn this morning and also got your letter with the stamp in it. I have not yet heard from Osborne but have written to him. I'm looking forward to getting a really newsy letter from you so send it along. We have a very interesting man in with us, arrested on suspicion and been here since Monday, who is one who those who got get the wanderlust and has been all over England. He'll be 60 before we've done with him, I expect. Our soldier chum was taken from us this morning and sent to Swanage. He did not want to go, but they have a way in the army. Today they forgot us and we got no dinner until two o'clock and had breakfast at 7.30. Glad that Lloyd's paid up all right and thus you're doing my work so well. This is my last sheet of paper so we'll now finish. Lots of love and kisses to you all, Frank.